Acts 13. Uh, it records the beginning of Paul's first missionary journey. Uh, they left from Antioch uh, and then preaching in Cyrus and then on to Pamphylia and Galatia, which are in modern day Turkey. Uh, we see that Paul traveled with a guy called Barnabas and for some of the trip, another guy called John Mark. And they, they traveled clockwise, planting churches as they went. Uh, when they reached a place called Derby, they turned around uh, and returned by the same route, going back to those churches and strengthening them and encouraging them on their way back to Jerusalem. Uh, and because of this, this mission, uh, we hear in verse 49 that the word of the Lord spread throughout the whole region. This was really the beginning of the missionary movement, where we saw believers intentionally taking the gospel abroad and planting churches. This is a huge moment in history. And it all began at a prayer meeting. We see in verses 1 to 3 that the church in Antioch met to worship and fast. And then they heard from the Holy Spirit that they should send Saul and Barnabas off on this journey. So they prayed more, fasted some more, laid hands on them and sent them off. There's so much cool stuff in this passage. It's a long chapter. I hope you've read it. Uh, But what I want to do is I just want to focus in on something that is easy to skip over. In fact, um, I hadn't even noticed it until I read a commentary that pointed it out. But it's right there in the beginning. First one, we read this. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. That's it. Seemingly an historical tidbit, right? Yes. But this small bit of historical information encapsulates the radical, inclusive message of the gospel. This small verse gives us insight into the cultural and ethnic diversity of the church at Antioch. We know this just by looking at their names uh, and also by knowing a little bit about their history from other parts of the Bible. Let's have a look at these guys. Firstly, Barnabas. He was a Jew, but he was originally from Cyprus, an island in the middle of the Mediterranean, uh, so not part of the mainland Middle East. Uh, Simeon, that's a Jewish name, but we're told he's also called Niger, which means black. And most commentators believe that this is a descriptive word because Simon was African. He had dark skin. Lucius was from Cyrene, uh, which is in North Africa, modern day Libya, uh, which means he was also African. Uh, And Menaean was Jewish, uh, and he was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. This means he grew up with King Herod as a close friend, the same Herod who beheaded John the Baptist and was complicit uh, in the death of Jesus. It's pretty crazy. And then Saul, a highly educated Jew who was a Roman citizen because of his good social connections. The original sending church was made up of members with diverse ethnic, religious, cultural and socioeconomic backgrounds. They would have looked different, spoken different languages, grown up worshipping different gods, eating different foods. They would have had different political affiliations and ideas and different levels of social connectivity. Yet here they are, praying, worshipping and fasting together and sending off a couple of blokes on a journey that would change the world as they proclaimed a message of a kingdom where all can be one in Christ. This message echoes throughout the Bible and it reaches its climax in Revelation 7 verses 9 and 10. John is given a glimpse of God's throne room and he says this, After this I looked and before me was a great multitude that no one could count. From every nation, tribe, people, language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, that's Jesus, They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. How good is that? Every nation, tribe, people and language saying, Our God, this is one God for all the people. And this ethnic and social diversity is written into the church's DNA because we recognize that all humans are the image of God. 
This ethnic and social diversity is part of our shared future together. Uh, It reminds me of what a preacher once said, that if you're racist, you're not going to like heaven very much. Uh, And in a world that has huge social, ethnic and racial divides, the gospel and the church are a light to the world where we can experience unity while still celebrating the good parts of our diversity. And it shouldn't surprise us that an ethically, uh, sorry, an ethnically diverse church, a socially diverse church, a racially diverse church was the first to send missionaries to a Gentile land. Our call as Christians today is to take the gospel to all nations, people, groups, languages, ethnicities. And whilst this can happen abroad, uh, it's, it's actually pretty hard to get abroad these days, as we all know. Uh, but we are even blessed in Australia who have been joined by refugees and migrants and asylum seekers from many nations and languages who are hungry for the hope that only God gives. So I think after reading this passage, we should rejoice that we, Narrabeen Baptist Church, are custodians of a message that is wonderfully inclusive. And then to go and live lives that show that. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for your inclusive message. We thank you that although we were far from you, you brought us near through the blood of Christ. We thank you that people from every tribe, nation and language are worshipping you and will be worshipping at your throne for all eternity. Lord, we pray that you will give us hearts and minds that are welcoming and open and inclusive, uh, that reach beyond any social, ethnic, racial boundary, seeing all people as made in the image of God. And we may may celebrate that in our churches, in our homes, in our neighbourhoods. May you remove any prejudice from our lives so that we may see people as you see them. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.